Shall one or start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Kakudash. Double honors to my teachers, which are the elder apostles of the Great Millstone. Peace and salutation to the hopefully elect tabernacle of David scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And as a quick disclaimer, you know, for you uh, brothers and you sisters out there, you know, send your prayers up for, um, you know, the, the, the Akim and the Akwaf and the families, you know, that might be impacted by this uh, polar vortex, you know, which is uh, sweeping through the Midwest all the way down to um the South. And you got a lot of uh, power outages, you know, going on because this extreme weather is impacting, you know, the um the power grids. So, you know, some people are going without um power. You know, they're not able to um get gas at the gas pump, you know, because the uh the power is out. You know, certain brothers are not able to uh, you know uh transportate, you know, because uh, you know, that, that coolant and the fluids in their you know, system is, is, is freezing up. All right. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot going on and, you know, for you brothers out there that you already know, you out, you out by Shmi, I was shy. It's gonna, you know, deliver you through your, 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 your affliction. All right. But, um, in this lesson, I want to, um, you know, go into this video in which, um, you know, this guy right here, he happens to be a native uh, from Texas, and he's reporting on how 45% of the U.S. wheat is being damaged by this extreme freezing cold. All right, and, um, you know, wheat is one of the, you know, major important commodities, you know, in our nature. All right, because it's, you know, usually uh, wheat is used for making a wide range of, you know, different food products that we consume, you know. You need your bread so you can make your sandwiches. You know, you need your uh, your burger buns if you want a burger. Um, muffin, you, want, you eat muffins, well, you need wheat for that. Uh, you, you want to make some spaghetti, well, you need uh, some noodles. You need some angel hair pasta or whatever. Uh, uh, bow tie pasta, you know, pen pasta. That's all made with wheat. All right, you eat biscuits in the morning for, for breakfast, pancakes pastry cereal bars that's all made out of wheat okay so it's a it's a, a an important you know commodity and even the scriptures tell you that uh you know one of the um essential products in our in our life is uh wheat I think it's in um what what uh chapter is it? In? It's in Soraka. Uh, where is it at? I think it might be in thirty nine. Let me check thirty nine chapter. Yep. This is uh Sirach thirty nine and twenty six. It says the principal things for the whole use of man's life are water. You know, we, we, we need water. Our body is made up 75% of water. Fire, iron, you need iron. Okay. And these are all different um, minerals, you know, that, that does the body good for you. It says in salt, flour of wheat. So, you know, you get your, your flour from wheat. It says honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil. And clothing, all right. And um, one of those principal things is uh being threatened by this uh extreme weather, which you know me personally, me speaking as a man, you know I could be wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised if Esau has used, you know, his weather uh, modification technology to 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 cause this you know freezing cold, you know, to rip through you know the states like it's doing. And, and the fact that it's causing damage to, you know, these uh, crops, you know, these uh, commodities that we need, you know, we already know who has um, all to gain from uh, a situation like that. I mean, who recently just bought 242,000 acres of farmland recently? So, I mean, it will make perfect sense, 
you know. But I could, like I said, I could be wrong, you know. This could very well just be, you know, the Most High showing strange uh, signs and wonders in the earth, because that's also part of prophecy. All right, but um, if this is so, and if you know a lot of damage is being caused to a lot of these uh farms that produces these uh crops, you know, these uh, different commodities, then um, you're gonna start to see, you know, the price increase on these commodities. All right, it's gonna be uh, scarcity, in which that leads to famine. And I'll, let me get a real quick, because you got pestilences sweeping through the world, and now you got these crazy weather patterns happening. Well, that shows you that the Lord, you know, he he's sitting in judgment. All right, he got the uh, the, the pale horse. All right, that's that's basically on a on a world tour. Uh, Revelation 6 and uh, verse uh, 7, it says, matter of fact, let me start up. Revelation 6 and 6, it says, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and, and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with them. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Okay. So, you know, of course, you know, the sword is going throughout the earth, taking a lot of people out. All right. And he saw he's a major part of that because, you know, the Lord blessed him with the sword. He saw has the power to use weather modification technology they call it the harp where he can you know cause floods massive floods and you know flush out your uh, your, your vegetation and your crops he can cause uh, earthquakes hurricanes and he can possibly even uh cause this uh cold uh weather man these ice cold winds that's you know sweeping through the country you know, because that's that's not normal. It doesn't get this damn cold in Texas, man. That it gets so cold that, you know, they lose power. So definitely, you know, the Lord is uh, working his work in the earth right now. Now, the Lord is sending those plagues. All right, let me go to uh, Matthew 24. And then I'm, I'm going to let the video play. This is uh, Matthew 24. And uh, verse uh, verse six, it says, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. You know, that's talking about, you know, uh, you know, uh, major wars, you know, major conflicts that, that you see happening, you know, whether it be by proxy over there in the Middle East. But that's what you see happening. And the Lord is basically getting these nations ready for the war of Armageddon, which is going to uh, be fought with uh, nuclear missiles uh, right before Yahweh Shai comes back. But we know that, you know, uh, things got to happen leading up to that, like the Mark of the Beast, for example. Continuing on, it says, and there shall be famines. So there's going to be a shortage of food, food supply, and pestilences, diseases, you know, major sicknesses. And earthquakes in diverse places, and that's happening too. All these are the beginning of sorrows, right? So, uh, without further ado, let's uh, play the video. Gentlemen, we've spoken a lot about the fact that during the grand solar minimum, we experience a wavy jet stream. It's called meridional flows, where pockets of cold air sneaks down, and they call that lately a polar vortex, or warm air will sneak up, and they scream about global warming. The latest example of this is happening right now, as the polar vortex descends across the U.S., and all eyes are on my home state of Texas, where it's just not supposed to get this cold. You know, people don't usually wrap their pipes uh, that aggressively. Sometimes they don't even build pump houses, because 
Why would you? It's just, it doesn't get that cold in Texas. Let me get a quick script. I think it's in uh, Psalms. Who can stand before it's cold? Yep. This is uh, Psalms 147 and 17. It says, He cast forth his ice like moral cells. Who can stand before his cold? All right, and the Most High, you know, he 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 governs the earth with the palm of his hand. So ultimately, even if Esau is responsible or not, we know that the you know that kind of power only comes from the heaven. The Lord can make it cold. All right, this hey, this is that that winter man, that dark winter, you know, and the Lord even made um. You know, mentioned to his uh, you know, his uh, disciples when he was giving them warning of what's to come. He said, "Pray that, pray, pray not that your uh, flight be in the winter." You know, that's the worst time to have to, you know, be as a pilgrim in the in in the earth. You got to travel through all that cold, and you got to have a hell of an immune system to you know withstand the cold. You know, without without uh, getting sick. That was how the um. A lot of uh, Reubenites, you know, they died off when they had to, um, when they were being banished from uh, uh, Florida and they had to travel all the way to, you know, Oklahoma, Texas, that whole area. And a lot of them dropped dead, you know, traveling through the winter. You know? Um, so let's, uh, let's go back. Texas. But it is now, and this is an example of how our infrastructure is built to withstand certain thresholds. It's very bespoke, and when conditions exceed those thresholds, things break down. It sounds a lot like the reports I was putting out two years ago when nuclear power plants were going off in the northeast part of the U.S. because coolant was freezing in the pipes, and they had to shut down the nuclear power plants. But uh, today it's in Texas, and so uh, a lot of people are speaking about this. Of course, it is an extremely dangerous situation with the grid down all day. It becomes a cascading series of failures. Without power, the stores close and you can't get food. Without power, the pumps don't pump and you can't get gas. So it is legitimately a, very, a real problem, a lot of dangerous situations going on, and people suffering. Um, and so in the wake of this, you will absolutely hear for better regulations and we need to uh, look at you know, why did we all get this huge power bill after this thing happened. And uh, you can expect, just as happened in the wake of the PG&E fires, that uh, all of the Texas utilities will start to look at microgrids, which is exactly something that's spelled out in Agenda 2030. We need to move towards microgrids and local small power generation, which of course comes with that cost. It's more resilient, but you don't get as much power out of them. You'll have only a small energy allowance. So the events that are happening today do um, have that element of spelling out the future here. You're going to see people call for microgrids for increased resiliency, but then, yeah, we're going to have to ration your power for the rest of time. That, of course, is what happens when we are all suffering through the green agenda, the fact that they've put these ridiculous turbines up there that are freezing in place. This is happening in Germany as well. It's happening around the world. Uh, but there is one aspect of this polar vortex today that's not being talked about on other channels. And I want to look at that now. That is that the cold temperatures, if you look at the map, it aligns very precisely with this, which is a map of the U.S. wheat growing zones. And in fact, Arlen Suderman put out a tweet earlier today that said, actually, as temperatures fell to minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit, lots of damage because we don't have a lot of snow cover right now to insulate the wheat, the winter wheat crop underneath that. It's just been very exposed to these extreme temperatures. And so, in fact, Commodity Weather Group estimates a whopping third of our hard red winter wheat crop has been susceptible to significant damage right now, and about 15% of it on top to spotty damage, bringing, of course, a total of 45% of our wheat crop being damaged today alone. Now, it's pretty remarkable in any case to think about some weather event causing damage to nearly half of the U.S. winter wheat crop. But this becomes particularly troublesome 
in light of the fact that we're in this global grain shortage right now and other countries around the world are taking steps to protect their domestic food prices like we just saw argentina a couple days ago say we're really trying hard not to stop exporting our wheat to put a ban on our wheat exports of course what that means is if they do it then we won't be able to buy wheat from Argentina. And other countries, again, around the world, will it cascades, right? Other countries will stop exporting wheat. They will hold on to what they have so that they will have bread for their own people. So when you see the U.S. in this uh, precarious situation, unable to find another country on earth from whence to import their wheat and losing nearly half of our wheat in a single serving, uh, this is something we should be paying attention to. So that, that's a big deal. If you are, if, if your produce is being damaged, and then other countries that you would normally get ex, uh, imports from can actually export their uh, uh, commodities to you, that's a big deal. Okay, you're talking about scarcity. You're talking about a shortage. Like I said in the beginning, you need wheat for for uh, a wide variety of, of of reasons, man. Okay, let me finish this out. So, just a brief look at a few different aspects of this current polar vortex that we're enjoying right now. My heart goes out to those of you in Texas. I've got plenty of friends and family there. And so I'm keeping in touch with those of you that still have your cell phone batteries. I also do want to mention, while I've got your attention, that YouTube is currently giving strikes to the Ice Age Farmer channel. So if you value this broadcast, get off YouTube now. Please find this channel on bitshoot.com slash Ice Age Farmer or odyssey.com slash at Ice Age Farmer. You should have already done it because... There are only a few of you on those other channels compared to here on YouTube, and I am already posting content exclusively to these other platforms. So if you're still here on YouTube, you are missing out, and soon you will be missing out completely. It's just a matter of time now. The strikes are rolling in today. Yep, and that's the you know, devil controlling all information. It's, a, it's an info war. You know, their whole job is to keep you distracted, to keep you uh, uh, misinformed. You know, completely out of the loop of understanding, you know, what's going on. Because these devils got everything to gain from your ignorance. All right, but anyway, you know, that's pretty much it. And um, let me go to uh, Second Ezra now. Because the Lord said he would bring these plagues upon the world. And we're seeing them starting to happen right here in Babylon. All right, Second Ezra 15. And uh, one, it says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee, that speak against thee, for all unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. But wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So that's the so the Lord said because of the wickedness is being, you know, uh, drastically increased in the earth, and everybody got so much pride in them. This these are the things I'm gonna bring on the earth. All right, I'm gonna bring the sword. I'm gonna bring the famine, death, and destruction. I'm I'm basically I'm bringing different forms of judgment. Because the Lord is sick of the, 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 the bullshit, you know. But I'll, to uh, get to the point, I'm going to jump down to verse. Um, I'll start at verse uh, 10. The point is at uh, verse um, 13. And it says, Behold, my people was led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them to suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. It's talking about uh, you Israelites. You know, you are led as a flock to the slaughter, man. A lot of you are lining up, you know, at these different uh, uh, clinics, these uh, big-ass stadiums to get that damn death row jab. So you already uh, led as a flock to the slaughter, man. All these celebrities and entertainers that got influence over you, they're in, uh, 
enticing you to get that jab. You believe this whole thing that this that these elites, you know, got going. Playing right into their hands. That's why you and and you know where the Lord set us up to actually warn you. All right, to warn you from your way and to and to repent and, and to you know open your eyes and not trust your enemy. And some of you just, you know, you you uh you know, you're just brushing it off. Like, you know, we full of shit, you know, you y'all a bunch of conspiracy theories, theorists, you know, so on and so forth. So, you know, we just let Jake be. But you know, you can't say that the warning, you know, didn't go out. It's it's went out for decades. Continuing on, it says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. And we know one of those uh, plagues that the Lord brought on uh, ancient Egypt was uh, hell. He brought fire and hell down and that destroyed their vegetation and their crops. And you had the locusts that, you know, caused them to, you know, lose a lot, you know, of their, um, you know, their crops and vegetation, which you also had. Uh, uh, the, the the hell and the fire that that came down, and it ruined you know their their um their vegetation, and that was you know something that they made their their economy off of. You know them being able to pr produce because they was you know a, a a fruitful land. You know there's a reason why the Lord, you know, gave us the land flowing with with milk and honey. Uh, from from uh, Egypt all the way to the Euphrates uh, up north to the Euphrates River, you know that was um, very fertile land, and Egypt was always you know uh, flourishing. It was always rich in produce. It happened you know when when Joseph, you know, came up the ranks in in ancient Egypt, and when the Lord you know sent that famine in the land of Canaan, you know everybody had to go down to Egypt. You know, to 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 stock up, and they made all that that dope, all right? So, you know, the Lord is bringing plagues once again, but we're we're not in ancient Egypt in in the land of Martyrsarium anymore. We're right here in Babylon, here in America, which is uh, the modern day Egypt. Okay, it says Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail through the blasting and hell and with a fearful constellation. So all these, the Lord would br bring forth all these uh, extreme weather, you know, weather conditions that would, you know, cause destruction or the ruining of these, you know, crops and, and commodities. And as we can see, the wheat is being threatened by this polar uh, vortex, you know? So, you know, this is just the Lord, you know, bringing um, his judgment down, man. All right, this is, you know, another plague. All right, like I said, you, you could do a lot with wheat. You know, you know, Jake like to drink them cold brews. You know, you like to drink your, your Heineken's and, you know, your, your, your Miller High Life. You know, your your blue, your blue moons. Well, you ain't gonna be able to. You know, if if they don't. You know, if if, if most of that supply is gone and they can't, you know, import any of these, uh, uh. You know, wheats. You know, uh, uh, the different, you know, countries that's you know good in producing wheat. If they can't export their goods over here. Then you you gonna look at a a, a spike in the, in the price for 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 that commodity or all the products that have you know or or contain wheat you know so let me uh go here real quick this is uh, second edge sixteen. And uh, I'll, I'll read verse 5, and I'll jump down. This is Second uh, Ezra 16 to 5. It says, Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? You know, that's the Heavenly Father sending those plagues, man. Uh, verse 
uh, 8, it says, The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? He said it again. Right, to let you know, you know, who, who, who causes, you know, plagues to be sent out on the earth. That's the Heavenly Father, man. Okay? And the world got to feel it, especially here in Babylon because of their pride. Okay, so we're coming into that time. All right, let me jump down. Second Ezra's uh, 16 and 17, it says, Woe is me, woe is me who would deliver me in those days. The beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear because of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? All right, the scriptures tell us to, to, to watch, you know, unto prayer. The scriptures talk about, you know, being circumspect, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the times because the days are evil. And the Lord also said that he's going to feed, you know, his, um, his, his servants. Okay. He said, they shall laugh in a time of uh, famine. Or should I say, they shall uh, laugh at famine, they shall be satisfied in famine. It says, Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. You know, it's for correction, man. It says, Before all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful for the, of the uh, scourges. And, you know, he was saying that, you know, people need to pay attention to this, but you know, they ain't going, you know, these people don't know nothing, man. You know? These, these people are carrying on in their, you know, in their pride, you know, too busy doing these uh, silly ass challenges for, for social media clout. And they don't even realize this is what's going to come upon them. It says, behold, vittles shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow on the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. Okay. And that's what you got to look forward to, man. It's going to be chaos everywhere. It's going to be a shortage of food. All right, they're talking about bringing the troops down in uh, Texas and different other areas, you know, as a state of emergency. So who knows, you know, what's going to happen. But either way, you know, we're in that time where, you know, we got to definitely, uh, you know, keep our eyes single and, and watch, man. All right. Jacob's trouble is uh is right around the corner, man. We we entering right into the doorstep. All right. So anyway, you know, I'll try to I'll leave a link to this video in the description box. I don't think this is on YouTube, so um, you know, you'll be able to watch it. You know, if you wanna, you know, check it out, I'll I'll just uh, leave it in the um description box. So with that, I'm gonna give all praises to Yahweh Shai, and to the next lesson, Shalom.